I just do not know. I'd like to tell you that I do, that everything is clear. I know the reason why I'm here. I know what life is for. No need to question anymore. I know the answers, but of course I don't. I find life so confusing. I'm losing the plot. That's, of course, if there is a plot, I should be choosing. But maybe there is not. I just don't know. But maybe there is a plot, and there's a God who's got a plan, and God became man and sent prophets, wise men, holy men, even some women, to illustrate, demonstrate what life is for. Maybe some supreme being overseeing everything. How exciting, reassuring that would be if he, she, it, or they are writing the script and there's a meaning, a purpose, and if, presumably, if God has written the script, a happy ending, so that all that is wrong will be broken and be mended with a happy ending. Maybe that is the plot. I see how it could be, but most of the time I think probably not. Because, well, the universe is a bit on the big side, wouldn't you say? And how infinitesimally tiny a part of space our planet is. How minusculely minimal a might a human being is. In the unimaginable vastness of space, I'm tinier than the tiniest little pinprick. So how can a minuscule little pinprick like me claim to know that despite the cruelty, the suffering and the pain, there is a meaning, a purpose, a God-given meaning and purpose? Maybe we're just... A brittle. I know that religions will say there's a divine intervention, but how do I know these are not just a human invention? Maybe we're just this brittle bundle of atoms rolling around in scary space, and so maybe the only meaning that we can decide on is the meaning we human beings give. And as nature is red and two not tooth and claw, why not say sod the poor and everyone needy? I'm with the greedy. I'll put the me into meaning. The only meaning is me, me, me. I'll rise above the shit and show I'm fit enough to survive and be comfortably alive. But, you know, I don't, in fact, want to act like that. When I examine what I actually feel, I do find that the desire, at least to try and be kind, does seem real. I feel I need to try that. But why? Why not behave only for me, me, me? Why is it just because I'm not brave enough to be as selfish as I need to be? That I'm too feeble, spineless, wet to get amongst the fittest to survive? That I only think it's good to be kind because I'm the sort of sad little man not bold enough to be bad. <laughs> and let's face it, to try and be kind and go for this caring, sharing malarkey is not exactly macho daring, is it? <laughs> but then... If everybody feels free to be selfishly nasty, the outlook's pretty ghastly. If we don't at least try and treat each other well, then we have a chance of creating some kind of hell for ourselves. So maybe religions have got it right when they say that the best thing in life to try and do is to treat others as you would treat them, like them to treat you. Maybe that's a good place to start. After, with so many different religious political creeds, we absolutely need to find at least something that we're agreed on. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. If we start from here, maybe we're not that far apart. So whatever we disagree on, maybe we should agree that this principle is invincible. I know that for many religious people that will not be enough. They will say it's not just what you do that matters, it's what you believe. What God has revealed cannot be concealed. We have most definitely erred if the truth is in any way blurred. We cannot share, they might say, fully in what you do if you do not share fully in what we believe is true. And dogmatic politicians may be equally emphatic. We're right, you're wrong, sing our party's song or you don't belong and whatever we do, we will not work with you. Well, there's a place for ideals and creeds. But in the real world, with so many needs, there is this danger that demanding dogmatic belief will be a distraction from the necessary action. 
In the Christian Bible, Gospel of St. Matthew, there's a story of the Last Judgment, and Jesus says, Come to me into my kingdom, ye blessed of my Father. For whenever I was hungry, you gave me something to eat, and whenever I drank with thirst, you gave me something to drink. And they will say, Hang on a minute, Lord, when do we do that? And he will say, Whenever you did it for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Which seems to indicate that getting rid of wrong belief won't, cut, won't matter. All that matters is what I did. Well, that's just one story from one religion. It scarcely has any ultimate authority, but maybe it does indicate the right priority. We have one or two problems to solve, and we know how difficult it is to decide on how best to provide the right care for those in need. Especially because, you know, there's a right lot of bastards about and I should know because I'm one of them. <laughs> Not all of the time, I hope, but I can be selfish, I can be lazy, I can be inefficient, mean-spirited, bad-tempered, or just plain stupid. And so the good that I mean to do, well, I just don't quite do it. As a man from Tarsus called Paul once said, the good that I mean to do, I do not do which I suppose is a way of indicating our human predicament, that we just don't, even though we try for what is good, we don't manage to bring it off. There's a word, you know, to describe this state we're in, and it's sin, but don't let's go there today. It's that for another day. In so many ways, the fact is that human beings, despite our best intentions, again and again, mess it up. And I take it that we will be complicating things to the extent that we are not cooperating, collaborating. Which I take it is the main lesson from COVID. Not just that to meet the needs of the people in Leeds, churches, third sector organisations, the council have found that they can work together, can take great satisfaction from the action that they have done together. But that this work does not stop. Because the needs don't stop. Because COVID doesn't stop. It may be called another name in the future, but it seems where we are now that some kind of pandemic may be permanently endemic. So many problems in our city, in our country, in our world. So many problems that needed solutions by at the very latest, yesterday. And who knows what new problems, to name but one example, if bills for heating and lighting cannot be paid, the increase in dismay. How will people cope? Any talk of hope may seem a delusion. How to meet this inevitable increase of despair will need a rich profusion of coordinated care. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. The right respect for all human beings, the right attention to everybody's needs, which might, brief theological aside, which might be how to understand the word love in the command Love your neighbour as yourself, which demands, the word agape in Greek demands not, I think, a feeling, but an action. It's not what I do, what I feel for my neighbour that matters, that's irrelevant. What matters is what I do. The right respect for every human being, the right attention to everybody's needs. It requires the iteration of this compassionate commitment. It requires the unquenchable desire to practice these values of collaboration, cooperation. It's all a bit scary. It's a bit scary, but I think I know, no, I do know, that, isolate, that <laughs> organizations in isolation, lying low in their own little silos, are a desecration of our human potential. If we do not work together, we deny our common humanity. It is a definite profanity. Working together is hard, tensely testing, especially with so many tensely testing problems. But surprise, surprise, there's a prize. Not just pies in the skies, but a real prize. It's only by attempting this task that we will be seeing how we can be at our best as human beings. What's not to like? So let's get on our bikes and off we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs>